And uh, this week, while I was reading the Georgia Strait newspaper, I also uh, found a new term that I've never came across before, and the term is Harperism. Can you expand on this term? Yeah, Harperism, uh, it's uh, an SFU um, adjunct professor of communications, Donald mm -hmm. Gutstein, has been writing about um, conservative think tanks for many, many years. The Fraser Institute is the best known in Canada, and it's based in Vancouver, just a few blocks away from the Georgia Strait office mm -hmm. on Burrard Street. And it was created in 1974 by um, Michael Walker, who was the executive director. He was an economist. He'd worked for the Bank of Canada. And he has, he's a disciple of a famous Austrian-British economist, he eventually became British, named Fr Friedrich Hayek. And Prime Minister Stephen Harper is also a devotee of Friedrich Hayek. Oh. And so Hayek was, and another uh, one named Milton Friedman, they both won the Nobel Prize, mm -hmm. but both of them really argue that we should see markets, um, expanding markets. So, so what Harperism is, is basically incorporating these what are called neoliberal ideas mm -hmm. of creating markets where markets sometimes don't exist. So you can see that comes in the pressure to create private health care, um, in the pressure to expand private education. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it in First Nations um, where the conservative government is trying to advance the idea of individual land ownership and creating a market in land. Right now, most reserves, the, the land is owned collectively by the First Nation and that's actually been upheld by the Supreme Court of Canada, but if First Nations voluntarily agree. So Harperism is also um, in the eyes of Donald Gutstein, who's a, a very serious critic of this, uh, of the Prime Minister. He argues that um, another component of Harperism is being very gradual. So he's using this term Harperism like Thatcherism or like Reaganism yeah. and saying he's actually, it's a gradual revolution taking place in Canada and we're seeing fairly profound changes. Um, and a lot of that is influenced by these think tanks. So you've got the Fraser Institute, you've got the Frontier Center for Public Policy in Manitoba, mm -hmm. you have the um, Atlantic Institute for Market Studies in, in the Atlantic area of the country, you've got the Montreal Economic Institute. Um, so there are all these kind of neoliberal think tanks, they're all influenced, the McDonald Laurier Institute is another one, and they're all kind of based on the ideas of Milton Friedman and Friedrich Hayek. Mm -hmm. and, and so their ideas come forward. There's lots of people in the media who repeat these ideas. They're taken up by the government and they become policy. Um, one of the issues, so they're promoting something that they say is economic freedom. So basically get the government out of the way and create markets. Uh, one of the downsides is that this thinking can also lead to greater inequality, according to Donald Gutstein. So, income inequality. Yeah, income inequality. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that's um, and so he says that's the Achilles heel of this. But at the same time, he thinks there's he uses the word propaganda that there's a a whole propaganda network in place in Canada right now, shaping public opinion, shaping the political, and and narrowing the amount of the room for discussion. So. What, what um, and it's not new because the Fabian Society did the opposite in terms of expanding socialism and the welfare state mm -hmm. in England and in the Western world. So this is a response to that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly intellectual stuff. Uh, Donald Gutstein, is, this is his fifth book. Um, and, but it's, it's thought provoking and it's generating a lot of page views on, on our website on straight.com. Oh, for sure. And how does neoliberalism affect immigration? Well, I think that's an interesting point because if you believe that markets should make determinations of how our society looks like, mm -hmm. well, a natural outgrowth would be the temporary foreign worker program where the market employers are deciding who comes to Canada, not the government. Mm -hmm. So we've seen an increase, a sharp increase actually in recent years in the number of temporary foreign workers. People who, um, like the idea of more immigration to Canada, don't like this trend. It, it was common in, in France and Germany because you're not giving people a pathway to citizenship. They can only come, they're bound to their employer. If they leave their job, they're subject to deportation. Mm -hmm. So, and then what happens if they marry, if they have children? It, gets, it can get quite complicated. Mm -hmm. And so uh, progressives, I think, are much more inclined to favor an immigration system 
that is more rooted perhaps in family reunification mm -hmm. and also giving people landed immigrant status so then they can become citizens. And, and we still have that obviously in Canada, but the pendulum is moving and more to a market-based approach. Mind you, there's been a big public backlash against the temporary foreign worker program. So the government has made some changes, particularly in the area of um, fast food workers. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it, it's a risky political strategy because I don't think it's, it's that popular with the, with the public. Right, so it's not very popular with the public. What's, what's your opinion on Harperism? Well, the, I'll just say with that issue, it's very popular with the business community. Okay. Um, and in, in areas of, of low unemployment, like Alberta, like let's say you go to Fort McMurray where, where they're having trouble finding workers, the temporary foreign worker program can solve it. I think, personally, I think Harperism, I think Donald Gutstein's come up with a very intriguing analysis of what's mm -hmm. taking place in Canada, and I recommend the book. I think I'm definitely going to be reading that so I can get more engaged in uh, Harperism and the political issues that are happening here. So that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Charlie, for your wonderful insight on this week's current events. Wow TV viewers, don't forget to pick up your local copy of the Georgia Strait newspaper or visit them online at www.strait.com. Thank you and see you next week. Thank you for watching today's Wow News. We'll see you next time.